Emmeline, is this baby one or two for you? Two. Baby number two. You know what you're getting? A girl. A girl. You know, they always cause the most trouble. Uh, yeah. Uh. Once you get that blood pressure cuff on you, I want you to put your elbows in your lap. Good. Now drop a big deep breath in. Blow it out. Good. Drop your shoulders down. Put your chin on your chest. Wrap yourself right around your baby. Right around your belly there. Now I'm gonna touch you with my cold hands. I do apologize for that. Drop those shoulders. Nurse anesthetists, like all nurses, care about their patients. What I love about being a CRNA is the autonomy and working with patients and being able to care from them from start to finish. They're not just thinking about how important it is for them to do their work competently and to carry out the procedure exactly as it's supposed to be carried out. But they're thinking about that individual person. Most patients, when they come in, they say the scariest part is the anesthesia. And when, we, when we're able to come in and talk to them, and we talk to them about anesthetic options and what we're going to do and you know how we're going to meet them on the day of surgery, and just seeing that relief in their eyes, especially when they show up on surgery day and they see that same person they talk to in the pre-op clinic, they're like, oh, a familiar face, somebody that I, you know, that I trust and I believe in. You know, and it really has helped me to see how much pain changes people. And then when you can relieve that pain, it's... It's really rewarding. Try not to pull away. It does cause another poke. One, two, three. At the end of their procedure, when you're waking them up and they give you that look when they first wake them, they say, we're done? It's over? It's like, yeah, it's done. It's just, just that, that easy. They're comfortable and happy, and I'm happy. That is a success for me. Sometimes the only thing that gets rid of that pushing pain is pushing. Right. OK. Do you have any questions for me? Or self some medicine, I want you to call Gail and tell her you're going to do that, OK? OK. Because it can drop your blood pressure just like okay. We're a category of advanced practice nurse. And sometimes I think because we're behind closed doors, people really don't understand what goes on in an operating room. And so to say to them, well, if you've heard of certified nurse midwives or nurse practitioners, those are nurses that have gone for additional education and preparation to become an advanced practice nurse. And so I let them know that I'm like a nurse practitioner in terms of having gone for additional training, but that my additional education and skill preparation was in anesthesia. communities have been very creative about the use of their workforce to meet the needs of their community. So they have uh, really looked at the types of resources that they can use to the full extent of their training and education to meet the needs of the community without busting the bank and trying to bring in provider types. There's less redundancy of services too when you can utilize CRNAs um, as uh, a full service anesthesia provider. When you live in a community this small, you know everybody and everybody knows you. You go to the grocery store and the lady who checks you out, you did her anesthesia. Or you go to a restaurant for dinner and the lady who's waiting on you, you did her husband's anesthesia. About 80% of the land mass of Colorado is rural. 25% of the people live in the 55 sparsely populated counties, leaving you know, 10 counties along the Front Range holding almost all of the people. So most of the state is rural, and we need to have affordable and accessible health care. Nurse anesthetists help provide that for us. They can uh, manage a patient, stabilize a patient, uh, even if they're critical. Uh, using the whole spectrum of techniques, including intubation techniques, uh, IV access techniques, uh, pain management techniques. My uh, association with any interest in the CRNA group was when I was president of the State Board of Health, uh, where I was served for over eight years. Early in my term, the question came up about having non-supervision of CRNAs. And I was somewhat against that idea because uh, I felt like they might, several board members felt like the CRNAs might overstep their 
uh, their purview and do pain management and so on. Since that time, I've gone 180 degrees in the opposite direction. I think the CRNAs we have at this hospital are providing the best anesthesia I have ever seen. We think of what we do as routine. We do it every single day, and it can become very routine. But we remember as nurses that these patients that are coming for anesthesia, it is anything but routine for them. It could be their very first encounter with us, 10 minutes of time of meeting us, and trusting us to deliver an anesthetic to them. So that nursing experience of being able to build relationships quickly has really benefited me in my practice as a CRNA. Okay, Ms. McDonald, we're all ready to take you back, okay? Are you good? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to start to give you some sedation, all right? That's going to start to make you feel kind of drowsy. If you don't remember the trip into the operating room, that's completely normal, okay? We're going to take great care of you, okay? okay. No okay. worries. Thank you. All right. I'm going to fix your pillow. You start to just think good thoughts, okay? Under a general anesthetic, of course, the patient's rendered unconscious, but serving as their advocate that entire time is really the role of the CRNA, not just managing hemodynamics and fluid status and pain status and depth of anesthesia, but really being their advocate. So speaking for them to the entire team, because sometimes the operating room is full of providers, of reps from different companies for equipment, and so serving as their constant advocate, speaking for them, making sure they're safe and comfortable the whole time, is really what we do. Tilt your chin up towards the ceiling. Perfect. Now take three or four real big, nice, deep breaths all the way in, all the way out. Very tight on your left arm, okay? Just for a moment, gonna check your blood pressure, all right? Everything's perfect. I know it's terribly uncomfortable just the first time. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna give you a break, okay? We always say we have to be very obsessive compulsive. And um, I think that that shows every time you watch a CRNA do anesthesia because they have to have everything set up. They have to have their little nest made in the operating room so that they feel they have everything right where they can get to it on a moment's notice. It's a constant assessment. You know, in nursing school, where it's all about the assessment, be it the emotional assessment, the physical assessment, whatever that is. And that's what I feel that as a CRNA, we have to do. It's an assessment of myself. It's an assessment of my equipment of the patient, of the room equipment, maybe the lighting, the heating, the surgeon's beeper, the shoes that someone's wearing, whatever it is, it all has to be done. CRNAs, nurse anesthetists, are there for the entire case, the entire procedure. We are there to put them asleep. We are there for the duration of the procedure, and we wake them up at the end, take them to recovery room, and then we do rounds later on and post-op all of our patients to see if they had any concerns or any problems with the anesthesia. Now we got some dull out of here. I'm gonna give you a little bit more pain medicine. They do a great job taking care of my patients. It's a partnership and taking care of them, and I understand their abilities. I think they uh, give a full spectrum of care uh, to patients and are um, uh, highly skilled and able to uh, do what I need, and that is to put patients to sleep and to take good care of them and wake them up and bring them successfully through an operation. I think the future of nurse anesthesia is very bright, and in light of the Affordable Care Act, we all know that there are a lot of patients that are gonna be needing health care that now will have health insurance, will have a way into the hospital. And I think nurse anesthetists are poised to provide this service. We're gonna to need to expand the scope of practice of nurse anesthetists and advanced practice nurses in general in order to meet the health care needs. And I think it's perfectly appropriate to expand that scope of practice as long as we have well-prepared, well-educated nurses who uh, can provide that care safely and competently and caringly as well. If I were still president of the Board of Health, uh, I would have voted now to authorize them to do whatever they feel competent to do. I love my job. I love it. It's very rewarding. I'm just in my element. I would never turn around and go back again. It's the most wonderful position that you can have, that you get to 
take care of patients and take them through some of the most difficult times that they have in a safe manner. Having that type of experience and that connection with patients has really, you know, brought it to the forefront for me and that's what I love about being able to have that hands-on and that, uh, that close connection with patients. We're basically their voice, their, their advocate the entire time they're asleep because they can't speak for themselves. Um, so we're kind of their eyes and ears while the surgeon's performing on the other side of the drape. It's rewarding both professionally and personally and you can't ask for much more than that from a profession. I think it's so comforting when I can say to a patient when I'm out there in the pre-op area before their surgery explaining what's going to happen. Hi, my name is Jennifer Herrenberg. I'm a nurse anesthetist. I'm going to be with you the whole time. You're in good hands. We'll take care of you today and everything's going to be okay.